Hi all out there and welcome to another Unscripted Flix Picks review. I apologise for not doing any videos for a while, but unfortunately I just haven't had the time due to being away on holiday or sorting out stuff with various other projects, but hopefully I should get back into the swing of things. Now today marks two weeks until the release of The Dark Knight Rises, and as you can probably tell this is a movie I really can't wait for. So I thought I'd kick things off with the first in the Christopher Nolan Batman movies, which is Batman Begins. And then after this review, um, over the next couple of weeks, I shall be doing both Gotham Knight and obviously finishing off with The Dark Knight and then doing my review of The Dark Knight Rises when it's released. reason why I'm doing Gotham Knight is because, this is just my opinion, but I personally feel it's still part of the Christopher Nolan Batman story even though it's not officially classed as that because it's not actually directed by Nolan himself but enough on that one, here's Batman Begins right off the bat this is one of my favourite Batman movies and one of my favourite superhero origin stories that I've ever seen besides the original Superman movie from 1978 because, okay, fair enough, in the Tim Burton movies and the first Joel Schumacher one, you did get glimpses of the origin and how he became Batman, but this really goes into detail about it. You have a fantastic cast backing it up with Christian Bale as Bruce Wayne and Batman, Michael Caine as Alfred, Morgan Freeman as Lucius Fox, Katie Holmes as Rachel Dawes, and I have to say, she's not the perfect choice, we'll get to that in Dark Knight, but for this movie, I think she does a good job, and of course you have Cillian Murphy, is it Cillian or Killian, you'll have to tell me in the comments, Murphy as Thomas Crane, aka the Scarecrow, and he, for me, he kind of gets pushed aside a bit, which is a shame for Liam Neeson, who is playing Rachel Ghoul. But what a fantastic choice, as he seems to really embody himself in this role. And of course you have Gary Oldman as Commissioner Gordon, who is one of the best Commissioner Gordon. Well, technically he's not Commissioner in this movie, spoiler alert, he's Sergeant Gordon. And... Like I was just saying, he has to be one of the best choices for Jim Gordon that I have seen in a live-action movie. No offence to Pat Hingle, but I do feel in those movies he got pushed aside a lot. And I love the dark tone of this movie. A lot of reviewers have already spoken about this, but for me, this really captures what Batman's about and how he takes down in his enemies and why he does what he does at the end of the day. Whereas the other movies did really address that, in my opinion. So, and I love the special effects in this. They're some of the best put on film, had we not had Dark Knight. But like I said, I'll, as you can tell, I'm really looking forward to getting to that review. But, you know, for what it is, I'll have to give this movie, as a final verdict, a 9 out of 10. It's almost perfect, but there are a few moments where you think, hmm of this move along slightly more now and that's going to do it for now be sure to like favorite and subscribe coming either tomorrow or sunday providing i can make the screening will be my review of the amazing spider-man and on tuesday night i'm hoping to review batman gotham night see you all soon and take care all the best and also before i forget before i stop this video I'm not going to make an edit here, but be sure to comment below and tell me what your favourite Batman movie is. Take care and see you all soon.